Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the relationship between Venn diagrams and probability. Again, the idea between with Venn diagrams and statistics in general is this idea of being able to visualize the relationships between things. And so just to recap um, Venn diagrams, we have this box around the universal set. And remember that for probabilities, all the probabilities have to add up to 100%. So we can label things inside of our different components of our, of our sets in terms of their probabilities. As long as all of these probabilities add up together to be 100%, then we're good. So 0.3 and 0.2 is 0.5, and then 0.25 and 0.25 is also 0.5, and add those two together, you get one. So that's sort of what's going on here. So what this uh, diagram is saying is that the probability of being in set A is this combination of 0.3 and 0.25, so it's 0.55. And the probability of being in set B is, again, this combination of 0.25 and 0.2, so 0.45. The probability of being in neither A or B is 0.25, so outside the union. The probability of being in either A or B is all of these added up, but again, this one only one time. So 0 0.3, 0 0.25, and 0.2 would give me 0 0.75, which is again the complement of the, the, this is the union, the complement of the union is everything outside of that. So this all kind of makes sense. Um, the probability of the, being in the intersection is 0.25 and so forth. So this gives us some way of sort of again, visualizing relationships between sets. Um, if we were just add up the probability of being A and the probability of being B um, separately, the 0.55 and the 0.45, we would get one and we would think, oh, there was no, there was nothing outside either A or B. And that's not really true because we have to deal with the fact that they share elements in common. And so that's how we're going to proceed with this. So we're gonna sort of use our Venn diagrams to uh, identify these uh, relationships between probabilities and uh, in different aspects of the set, different components of the set, and why some of our formulas are the way they are. So, um, as an example, just to sort of ask ourselves some questions, uh, I've designated set A to correspond to a, an event that somebody likes apples, and event B corresponds to the event that the blue is the person's favorite color. Again, just sort of illustrate an application. So what is the probability that a randomly selected person from the set likes apples? Well, that means that they're in set A. And so that is this value plus this value. That gives us 0.55, which we talked about earlier. What is the probability the randomly selected person from the set doesn't select blue as their favorite color? So again, that's a complement. So first we have to find out what is the probability of someone liking blue? So 0.2 and 0 0.25 is 0.45. The complement of that is 0.55 and uh, one minus 0.45. And we can see that that has to be true because people who like apples but don't like blue are 0.3 and people who like neither apples nor blue are 0.25. And if you add those up, you get 0.55. So that is consistent with our Venn diagram. What is the probability of liking both apples and having blue as a favorite color? Again, so that's the intersection, having both be true. That's the intersection, that's 0.25. What is the probability of liking either apples or having blue as a favorite color? So in, if you just, if you don't have a Venn diagram uh, mapped out like this, um, the rule is that you take the probability of A and the probability of B, and you have to subtract off the intersection of A and B. And the reason for that is because if you just add up A, you count both of these. And if you just add up B, you count both of these. And what's happened is you've counted this overlap in both 
cases. You've counted it twice. And so you have to subtract off that value one time in order to only count it once. And But when you use the Venn diagram in this way, and you've pre-calculated what this intersection is, you can just add up the probabilities. So 0.3 and 0.25 and 0.2 gets you 0.75. But you can see that you'll get the same answer using that formula. The probability of A we found was 0.55. The probability of B we found was 0.45. And then the intersection we subtract off, 0.55 and 0.45 is one minus 0.25 gives us 0.75. So they give us, both give us the same value. And the Venn diagram helps explain why that extra subtraction is in that or formula, that, in, that union formula, because we don't want to count it twice. And so that is that formula spelled out. What is the probability of being neither an apple lover nor someone who likes blue? So that means that, again, looking at our diagram, neither in apple, so you're in the complement of apple and you're in the complement of B. Where do they overlap? Well, they're essentially the complement of the union because you don't like either one of them. And so that's your 0.25 outside of both sets. And then are A and B independent? Now this is a, a common probability problem and it basically has to do with this definition that if the two sets have ind are independent of each other, if the probabilities are independent, then you can multiply the probability of A and the probability of B, and that will get you the same value as what's in the intersection of A and B. Now this works for things like coin flips and rolling a die, because if you get ahead, it's not gonna change the probability of what's gonna end up on your die roll. That doesn't make any sense. But that's not necessarily the case in sort of real world cases, right? If you're, um, if you're um, a female, you're more likely to have worn a dress in the last year than if you're a male. Um, there will be some men that wear dresses and there'll be some women who no, don't wear dresses. But um, if you know that they're a female, they're much more likely to have said, yes, I wore a dress in the past year. Um, sometimes the differences are not quite as stark, but if there's a difference, that doesn't matter for this independence concept. So here, we're just gonna check it. The probability of A is 0.55, the probability of B is 0.45, and when you multiply them, you get 0.2475, but the probability of A and B is 0.25. These are, these are close, but they're not identical. And um, in sort of this, stage of just basic probability definition, descriptive descript, um, parts of the probability process, um, the probability concepts. Um, this does not meet the definition. They are not equal. They're, they're similar, but they're not exactly equal. There is slightly, there's a slight change and therefore they're not independent. There's, there's a small dependence that is taking place. Now, um, if you continue with statistics, there will be a hypothesis test later on um, to kind of determine whether these differences from a sample are meaningful or not, whether they indicate a real representation of probability or whether um, they're, they're just artifact of the random sampling process. But at this stage, the definition is, has to be here, adhered to strictly. And since they're not identical, uh, we would have to say at this point that they are dependent. So again, the idea here is that you're using these Venn diagrams to help you organize information. Now, we can also use these same ideas when we are trying to look at problems that involve counts. Um, because counts can always be converted to probabilities by dividing by the total in the set. So this is an example of uh, a Venn diagram set up based on counts. Um, the total number of counts is just adding up all of the different components. So 65 plus 120 plus 90 plus 85 gives us 360. So I could convert this 
two probabilities by simply dividing each of these counts by 360. And then it would look exactly like our previous example. And so we can, we can further do these calculations. What is the probability that a random uh, person likes elephants? That's our set E um, at the circus. And set F um, is the corresponds to the event that the person is in their 50s. Um, so we can, we can calculate these probabilities simply by counting up, again, in our likes elephants in the, at the circus. 65 plus 120 is 185 divided by 360 and reduces to this. Um, what is the probability that a randomly select person is not in their 50s? So again, we can use this not in their 50s, 65 plus 85 divided by the total that'll get us our probability and so forth. So you can see how using each of these uh, diagrams to sort of help lay out the relationship. It's actually equivalent to like a two-way table, um, but you can use this to um, sort of help you uh, visualize what's going on and how these things are related to each other. What numbers do I need to select in order to answer these questions? Now, I noted that there, this, this information in the Venn diagram can be very similar to the data that's represented in a two-way table. And you can actually take a two-way table and turn it into a Venn diagram if you find that easier to work with. Or you can um, take your Venn diagram and convert it into a two-way table, again, if you think that's easier to work with. So this is an example of a two-way table. We have uh, categories of like skateboards and don't like skateboards and like snowmobiles and do not like snowmobiles. And what we want to do, is we're going to define our two sets. We're going to let K be the set who likes skateboards and N be the set of people who like snowmobiles. And um, the number of people who like both skateboards and snowmobiles like skateboards, like snowmobiles will be this intersection. So that will go in the middle of our two sets. The people who like skateboards but don't like snowmobiles will go in the part of the skateboard set, uh, this one, but that's not in the intersection of the other two sets. And then the people who do not like snowmobiles and also don't like skateboards will go outside so if you don't like either one, no, who do like snowmobiles but do like skateboards will go in the snowmobile set, but outside the skateboards intersection. And then the number of people who don't like either, they go completely outside the set. So let's see what this looks like. And so we have this one-to-one -one alignment. Let's shrink this a little so we can see. So 80 like snowmobiles and skateboards goes in the intersection. Um, here we have do not like snowmobiles, but do like skateboards. So in the, the K minus N set, skate, I like skateboards, but I'm not liking both. Um, do not like skateboards, but do like snowmobiles goes here. And then the number of people that like neither goes outside both sets. And again, they've given us the total here. So if we want to convert these to probabilities, like our first example, we would just divide everything out by uh, 160, and that would convert everything to probabilities. And then we can answer all of our questions exactly the same way that we did in our first example. So you can um, you can use Venn diagrams or two-way tables, whichever you like easier. If you have only these two categories, they're actually really easy to do the conversions for. If you have uh, like three, three categories in each of these, uh, it does get a little bit more complicated. Um, but it can still be done.